Hey y'all, I figured that I'd hop on this trend and teach you all how to animate that 02 TikTok dance. It's traced. The 02 TikTok dance actually originates from 2014 and was actually something called Me Me Me. This premiered back in 2014 during the Japan Animator Expo. To say the least, it's a very suggestive video, but looking a little deeper, in fact, more than just 10 seconds at it, you'll find that it's actually very much about sexual addiction and how that winds up affecting our perception of reality. And it's pretty goddamn dark. But anyway, that's my short little rant on that entire topic. You're here because you want to animate something. You want to animate a cute girl switching her hips back and forth. And I'll show you how to do it without tracing. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll learn a little bit of how to analyze animation and how to recreate it without having to just draw directly over it. And of course, this is all assuming that you actually know how to animate at the moment. This is not a beginning tutorial. I hope that is clear from all this. That said, if you want to stick around and watch and just listen to the dulcet tones of my voice, you are more than welcome to do so and you are valid. Also, it goes without warning that due to the nature of the source material, this video might get a little bit suggestive at times, so I hope that you all can be mature in the comments. I am bracing for disappointment. Anyway, I'm working in Toon Boom here, but technically the animation advice I'm about to give you can apply to most any program. If there's anything that applies specifically to Toon Boom, I'll be sure to note that. Originally, I actually started working on this in CSP, and it is wholly possible to do it in there. I am a rig-based animator, however, which CSP isn't as good with. CSP is great if you're planning on doing frame by frame, which I'd imagine a lot of you are. So let's take a look at our sources really quick. One thing as an animator that's kind of annoying when looking for source material is a lot of people like to post interpolated footage that plays it at 60 FPS. If you look closely, you can see that there's weird parts on the 02 version in particular where things seem to slide around and kind of morph or blink out of existence, and there's weird inconsistencies with the smoothness, such as if you look at her hair versus looking at her arms. Considering animation standards, the original was likely animated at 24 frames per second. Normally with these kinds of things, I'm inclined to work on twos to make life easier for me. So instead I'll just do mine at 12 FPS, which is equivalent to animating in twos at 24 FPS. So, looking at the original, tell me, what are the key things that you see moving around in this picture? If you said the ass and titties, congratulations! You're horny. But you're also right. The hip motion is in particular probably the most important part of this animation. And that is where we are going to start with our analysis. The big pitfall that most people have when they're animating something like this is they try to do everything all at once. Instead, you should be working on individual pieces at a time. Work on the bigger stuff first and then move down to the smaller details. So looking at what we can see here, the panties remain pretty obvious and triangular throughout the hip swing. We can use this as kind of a guide to figure out where the hips are kind of centered. They kind of swing back and forth in a slight figure eight pattern. Now in my recording, I did this completely freehanded and completely by eye. But for analysis purposes, you might want to draw a shape over the hips and kind of map out the motions to figure out where it goes. And you can see the motion as follows. You can also do this with the chest and also the head. I've decided to use red for the key parts that move around and then blue for the kind of in-between connecting parts like the thighs and the spine. This is what we are left with. It's a pretty basic motion, but it helps to tell us what we need to do for these parts when we actually start animating or drawing them. It's worth noting that this isn't even the sketch phase yet. This is like the pre-sketch phase, the planning phase. For the actual sketch phase, this is where things will start to diverge, depending on if you are a frame-by-frame -frame animator or a rig-based animator, like myself. Or, if you're competent, you can be a hybrid of both. I would recommend actually using rigs for this part at least. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing out basic parts for the body and things like that. For this, I'm going to be using my OC socket. You might have seen a few other animations or tutorials involving her before. She also appears in my webcomic, which you should totally go read. There's a link in the description. I'm going to make it detailed enough so that way I know where everything goes, in addition to telling me where the motion goes for everything. When I have my scrappy ad hoc rig ready to go, then I can start moving things around on the timeline. If you're working in Flash, this would be where you're using symbols, and each part would be a symbol. Now one important part of this tutorial or this demonstration, is the concept of combining animations. Instead of making one layer have all the motion for something, instead what if you have one layer handle a simple motion and another layer handle another simple motion, and then you combine their motions additively. So there's two things that I use to simplify my motions a bit. 
One is a mirror peg, because if you look at the original, you'll notice that half the animation, pretty much everything except for the head and the hair, is pretty much mirrored. It's not perfectly, but it's close enough that we can BS it that way. The other thing is everything kind of moves up and down in sync. So a simple thing that we can do for that is we can have one peg that handles mirroring the parts and we can have another peg that handles the vertical motion of everything. You can't necessarily do this in every single program. This is something that might be more Toon Boom or Moho specific. Uh, Flash may have ways to handle that now with Animate CC. Um, if you don't have the means to do this, you kind of just have to do it by hand or by eye. You can still use some of the methods that are displayed here. I've also made a separate recording here, breaking down my process a little bit, part by part. I think this will be a little bit more informative and easier to follow than my original plan of walking you through every single step linearly. So, to demonstrate, this is actually all the motion that is happening with just the hips. When we add in the mirror, we get this. You can see it's rocking back and forth now. And when we add in the parent peg on top of everything, it starts bouncing up and down. So basically, the only motions that we have going on for just these items is we have the hip, each loop, it is moving to the right twice, and it's kind of just rocking a little bit. In the middle, we have the mirror peg, it is flipping once, and then for the parent peg, it is moving up and down in a bouncing motion. All three of these combine to give the final hip motion that you see. Likewise, the next step is, for me, drawing the bust, which is going the opposite direction. Again, with half the bounce going on, looks like that. And then I do the legs, which are fairly easy to do. Again, to show without the bounce. I'm not gonna bother toggling off the mirror because the mirror is literally just taking these first few frames and copying them again. Then after that, uh, I would probably do the head. The head follows the bounce of the main thing of the main body. But this is all the movement that's going on for the head. All the other movement is being done by the parent pig. And then likewise, at the arms, which if you look at the um, drawing for the arm, it doesn't change at all. It's the exact same drawing, it just flips sides with the mirror. Same thing with the other arm. And lastly, we got the waist, which actually does have a lot of mo motion going on in there. Then eventually, start adding in the skirt parts. Start with doing the ends. And then can do the hem. And that gives the skirt. And then it just becomes a matter of making the body parts and putting them over top of the sketches. Like so. So the skirt probably deserves its own section of this tutorial because skirts are quite frankly very difficult to animate. The skirt is heavily a focus on this piece as well. So I'm gonna break down the process that I did to do this completely by eye. Cause as stated before, we are trying to avoid tracing in this. So let's take a look at the original again. We can see that the skirt kinda seems to have this revolving motion around her hips. This is probably due to the pleating on the skirt. Instead of just being a normal mirrored movement where it's swinging back and forth, it's actually kind of revolving around her, and it looks really nice and really interesting. For Socket's skirt, however, the pleating isn't the same style, so it probably wouldn't wind up doing that itself. This is all still helpful to look at, so that way we can observe kind of how the skirt has drag and how it changes form as she moves up and down and left to right. A lot of people assume that to best animate a skirt, you want to start with the hem. Sometimes this can work. Personally, I like to try and treat the skirt more as I do with hair, and do strands on the far ends of the skirt, on the left and the right. So, I'm going to map out motions of where the edges of the skirt will go, and try to keep them about the same length. When I can get those down, they'll look like tassels on the hips. I just need to make sure that they connect to the same point on every single frame onto the hips. And playing back, it's a hell of a lot easier to see what the motion looks like when it's only two lines that I have to deal with, rather than the entire thing all at once. It's very helpful at this point to go back to the original and watch the motion that kind of goes on, and just kind of look at how the skirt trails behind the original motions. Cloth has physics to it. It's going to lag behind. 
it's going to have inertia so that way when she comes back down, it's going to rise up, and that's when it kind of gives you the little bit of a flash. And then likewise, when she bounces back up and swings over to one side, the side where she's bouncing to is going to cling to her thigh a lot closer. When I have this all done, and it looks decent, then I can start drawing out the hem of the skirt, which I'm going to do in blue. So for me, the skirt is going to kind of flap up in a ping-ponging fashion. As she goes up and then back down, the side that she was moving to is going to rise up a little bit faster and sooner than the other side, and then that little lift will kind of carry over to the opposite side as she goes up again. In the end, I wind up with something like this. This is honestly going to be the hardest part of animating this entire thing. So take it slow, use onion skinning if you can, and make sure that each frame looks consistent. This is something that honestly has to be frame by frame even if you are a rig based animator. So my base sketch when done looks like this. It's important that in this stage that I make any edits that I feel are necessary, because this is the sketching phase. This is meant to be loose and adaptable. This is easy for me to edit. The only thing I care about at the moment is making sure that this motion looks good. Not the art, the motion. That is the very important thing, and this is why this is also usable if you are a frame-by-frame -frame animator. When I'm ready to start filling in everything and making the actual rig, or if I'm a frame-by-frame -frame animator, I would start going over and drawing over everything. But that is when changes kind of become final because they are a lot harder to change at that point because there's more dependencies and there's more detail going on and I have to start worrying about line weight and things like that. So, just like when I started, I'm going to begin by taking one frame and drawing out the components for every single part that I can possibly think of, at least as far as anything moves on its own. Additionally, for the arms, I want to note that I am keeping the elbows and the shoulders separated. This way I can actually move those parts around. When I got one pose done, then I can start kind of going over and redoing the process that I did before. Keep in mind, again, this is just for rig-based stuff. If you're working in hand-drawn frame by frame, you'll still want to follow this process that is isolating different parts and just drawing and animating those and doing them one at a time instead of doing the whole thing at once. I cannot stress enough how important it is to not get distracted by the entire drawing. Again, it is a lot easier to get things accurate and consistent if you are working on just individual pieces at a time. Only focus on animating the hips first and then connect everything else to that. Do it one at a time. So this time I decided to actually start with the hips and then I moved on to the arms and the head next. And then I actually decided to save the breast for last. <laughs> the real reason I saved them for last is because I'm actually gonna do a lot of frame by frame here because I wanna get that edit effect. Similar to the skirt, there's a bit of drag that kinda goes on in this. The head as well also doesn't really line up very well when I first do it. Luckily, it's not too much work to move the head into position to make sure that it connects to the neck correctly. And finally, I'm going to go back to work on the skirt again. I'll use the sketches that I made before to help me figure out where the skirt needs to go specifically, using solid black lines this time. I'll make sure to spend a lot of time on this because I need to make sure that this is accurate, because it is very easy to screw a skirt up. When it's close enough to a point where I'm satisfied, then I can start adding the pleating. I'm doing this a little bit more interestingly, where I'm doing the pleating as separate objects on top of the skirt. As with the rest of the rig, it's basically breaking it down into smaller parts that are easier to manage and easier to monitor. By doing the pleating in this way, I'm able to get a lot more consistent motion and I'm better able to identify issues and problems that I run into. I just need to follow the bigger shape as a sort of a guide. And the bigger shape also helps to act as the inside of the pleating. When the skirt is done, there's a few other things that I would add in. A lot of them are Toon Boom specific, such as using masks to make the stockings and things like that. If you're frame by frame, you would just draw those directly on. You wouldn't bother drawing the bare legs and then putting stockings on top. With the hair, it kind of follows the same principles as before. I want to make sure that there is a bit of dragon stuff going on there as well. And this can be done frame by frame, or it can be done using rigs. I'm using a combination here. But we basically want it to kind of swing back and forth as she bounces back and forth. Same thing also goes for the bow, but that is a lot less pronounced of a motion. I'm using some weird deformers here and there for that. And then also there is the ponytail, which again, is going to swing and have inertia and it's going to flow. This animation has a whole lot of flow and swing and inertia and jiggle and whatnot. That is the secret to making a popular animation. If you have long hair in your version that you decide to do, 
Uh, all I can say is that unless you're using something that has deformers, good luck, because hand drawing deformations like this is very tedious, and I would recommend simplifying it where you can. With that done, this about looks complete, and here is the final product. And look, it was made completely without tracing, completely by eye. So, there was a lot that kind of went on here, and as mentioned, this is a more advanced tutorial than normal. But I hope that this is still insightful on how you should approach stuff like this. The key thing that I always say to other animators is break things down, make them simpler, work on the big chunks first, and then work on the smaller chunks after. It is always going to be infinitely more easy to work on single components and figure out the motion just for those before you move on to the motions of everything in between. If you're trying to do everything at once, you will get overwhelmed, you will forget things. And this sort of applies to pretty much any form of animation. This could even apply to 3D. If you wanted to make this in 3D, for instance, you'd want to make sure that the entire motion, that you have the bobbing done first. Once you have the hips moving back and forth, which is usually the core component of a 3D rig, then you can worry about everything else. There's also a whole bunch of mess involving IKs and how to use those properly for this, but that's another topic. Anyway, as always, thank you to my viewers, my patrons, my supporters and subscribers, and anybody else who likes my work. I appreciate your love. And I love you too. Uh, go read my webcomic. Okay, bye. <laughs>